called intensive care because I think I put in the most effort and the most energy in getting this one bang on. And uh, I think lyrically it's probably the best best album that I've written. You see the trouble with you. It's taken two and a bit years to write uh, and record, and it's the longest that that I've had to write and record an album. So I, I, I think that's why it's called Intensive Care. It, it, it took so long because that's the amount of time we've had. You know, we haven't worked to a... We haven't had any deadlines like we, we normally have had with albums. And, um, you know, I was working with a new songwriting partner, Stephen Duffy, and we had to find out who each other was and what our jobs were when we write songs and how we write songs together. This is Stephen. He's a pseudo-intellectual Noddy Holder. <laughs> the first time I met him was when uh, he was performing Freedom on Top of the Pops. And I think that from very early on there was an idea that we should write together, but obviously he then went on to be in the most successful writing relationship since Lennon-McCartney, so one felt a little reticent. Yeah, I was expecting to get together with him and just do a couple of days writing and maybe come up with some nice folk songs. Um, and instead, we sat around talking for ages and did some electro. I think we did like radio, which was a single. And um, instead of getting the two folk songs that I thought I'd get, I was thinking, oh, this is really interesting. I should carry on with this bloke and see what he's all about. That sort of gives it away, doesn't it? There was a few weeks that we wrote at Air Studios up in Tavistock Hill in London, and there's a tiny, tiny studio room, which was cool, which was very productive. But the rest of it's been written in my bedroom, so tell you the truth, it's been brilliant. Um, this is my studio, and it's also my bedroom. That's where I used to sleep. And um, we're loosely basing this album on the lives of the two well, the three icons that are on the bed, Patti Smith and Richard and Judy. Um, that's what the whole album is based on, hence the, hence the title, Intensive Care, because we care very much for their careers. Every time I think about the 80s or, or my life, then there's a kind of melancholy heartbreak inside of me that um, I want to put into a record. The only man who made you come When you cried, you cried for us When we died, you died alone. I've wanted to make records. I've wanted to make singles or songs on this album that um, might break somebody else's heart in 10 years' time or 15 years' time when they think back about it. Normally, I, I, somebody plays something and I sing over the top of it. With this album, Steve has been very um, trusting. And he'll say, you play bass on this, and 
you play lead guitar on this and and um it's it, i've never written songs that way before you know so it's been it's been a fantastic process forgive me for saying this my venture it might be that this is the uh pops never mind <laughs> Key will be ringing the enemy, enemy will be ringing Mojo or whoever they ring. Oh, have you heard the new Robbie? Yes, well, I have. We're going to call you today for a meeting. I'm thinking we need to rethink this. Because we've had him in a box over here marked, you know, dickhead. And now we're going to have to remove him from the box marked dickhead into sort of like twisted genius. Have we got one of those boxes? Yes, they'll say. I was just preparing it yesterday. Ow, ow. A Place to Crash is, I think it's the, it's the only Rolling Stones riff that Keith hasn't written yet. <laughs> Stephen managed to find it. Um, it's just, it, it's just a party song, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be a good tune live. Everything is I just think uh, I just think it might be cool if it was called Johnny Cash. A place to crash or Johnny Cash? A place to crash is a cool thing. Where do we say a place to crash in it? Just in every first every every chorus. First line. Yeah, hey, find a place to crash. Yeah. Yeah, that's first all. First line of every chorus. Yeah, that's the place. Thanks, thanks for thanks for listening. <laughs> listening to me. Jesus. <laughs> What was Guy's number? <laughs> so you join us here today at uh, what was formerly A&M Record Company and it has now been turned into um, Henson Studios, people in charge of the, the Muppets. And there's a massive, massive Kermit the Frog outside. We shall be doing a song called Random Acts of Kindness and basically it's about revenge and wishing people were we're not as sadistic as they are. And in, in, in conclusion, writing the song, I've found out that uh, I am as, as, as at least as sadistic as everybody else. A fork in the jug there. <coughs> Should we sing it then? Those about to die, we salute you For those about to cry, we love you For those of us who live in fear Of happy Christmas and New Year I raise the toes to you Random Acts of Kindness sort of evolved from If, if not lyrically, sort of a, a, musically it evolved from that ethereal quality that um, causing harm to strangers by means of magic has. <laughs> no, that, um, that, you know, I, I think it's kind of a, a mystical song. It's kind of a magical song and it was born out of me trying to be um, Gandalf. Reaching 30 is a bit of a, a milestone. I, I, I think it, it's probably a bit of a cliche, but you do start reflect and grow up a little bit more. And 
you know, the self-hatred that I, I once had for myself has um, really quietened down. You know, I don't have it as much anymore. Um, and I, I enjoy life because I, I live in the sun. <laughs> you know, I, I live in California and it's, it's sunny all the time. And if, you know, it's sunny outside, then you have a, a sunny disposition. And, and I do at the moment, you know, I've got good friends. I've got an amazing career that I couldn't even dreamt about. Um, I keep myself fit. I'm well, I'm happy. Escalba, I'm ready. <laughs> That's my Clive Owen impression. <laughs> does sound like it too. <laughs> I've been nominated for an award. Escalba, I am ready. <laughs> There's no earthly way of knowing what was in your heart When it stopped going, the whole world shook The storm was blowing through you Waiting for God to stop this and up to your neck In darkness, everyone It's a little bit you, the film True Romance you know where uh, Christian Slater gets to talk to Elvis every now and again and um, every now and again I, I might believe that you know I have di I direct access to Al Elvis every now and again if I just think about him he'll be here if you build it they will come it's my tribute to Elvis that song My candle in the wind. <laughs> it's my candle in the wind. <laughs> About Albert. Left in any case is advertising space. Oh, you ask the world who's burning. Please be gentle. I'm still learning. You seem to say that you kept turning. always attracted me to his older work was his confessional nature of his lyric writing and I think that this has only got this is uh, as he's got older and he has more to say you know it's, it's more interesting I think the trouble with me you know, the trouble with me is I've got a head full of fuck I'm a basket case I mean this is deeply uh, startling news you see the trouble with me I've got a head full of fuck I'm a basket bitch I don't think I can love, love, love You see the trouble with you Is you're in love with me What a strange thing to do what a brave place to be
sometimes so desperately want to be in love or you know feel it and or, or be it or you know be in love with somebody have a, have a partner and and make um, myself and this person you know our team that we can get through anything together and I, I haven't yet and I'm 31 and um, there's a certain somebody in my life that probably nobody really knows about or, or even ever has done and she's been around for a long long time and um, you know, I, I still hold a torch for her, or hold a candle for her. For whatever reason, it um, it hasn't worked, and it's it's never been anything to do with her. You know, there's um, something blocking my right of passage to um, fulfilment in a relationship, and it's me trying to explain to this person that I do love. You know, but not that all-encompassing love that um, it's not you it's me <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I hope that, that that message is received and taken on board can we do something that's a bit chipper Everything I've done so fucking depressing. What you want to? You mean you want to write a completely different album? <laughs> <laughs> I think that this record perhaps is a little, a little more grown up, but that would be obvious because he is older. But I, I don't think that it's a radical departure. I think it is the next Robbie Williams album after Escapology. I don't think it's it's nothing to be frightened of. It was pretty terrifying while we were making it, but I think that it's okay now. Just dial it in Never found a job that for me was worth bothering I got a ton of selfish genes and lazy bones beneath this skin Oh Lord, make me pure when I I think maybe turning 30 and realising that there's still kind of a void in my life, not as huge as it was, you know, but it, it, there's still, I think it might be a spiritual void of some kind, you know, I, I, need, a, I need a woman to save me from Scientology. <laughs> you, 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 you find me a woman or the kid gets it, I'll join, I'm, it's a threat. I think the whole process with this album has been, you know, do some crap ones. <laughs> do some crap ones, do some good ones, do some crap ones, do some good ones. Experiment. Tripping. Um, it's apparently been said that it's a reggae song. I think if you listen to it, it just really isn't. That's somebody saying that, somebody talking about a song that they haven't heard. I wrote that song on the bass, and um, I think it's a little, I think it's a, a mini gangster opera. I think it's, I think it's probably Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, or, or, or Snatch, or both of them put together. Baseline, isn't it? I wrote the baseline, is what we're trying to say by me miming to this track. But I did write it. And you played it, played it. And I played it, played it. Will it say it on the album? Yeah. Oh, fuck it then. 
says my name on it. Nah, let's sing. Does this mean I've come around to liking Robbie Williams? Yeah, I have actually. I always, I always want to kill him off when I've been working two hours <laughs> or at the end of a tour, you know. And um, I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of like him now. He's all right. I've got used to him. You know, I'm not as embarrassed as I was about him before. You know, he, he does what he does and he serves a purpose. <laughs>